beginner rider looking for your first big bike. Do you currently have your 150 to 200cc motorcycle and already feeling a little bored with it? Or are you an expert rider with a previous 1000cc bike looking for an alternative not too fast bike to suit your daily needs but can still satisfy your speed and racing racing cravings? Well, you have come to the right channel. I'm your host for today, John Speedship, and here are my 7 reasons why you should consider buying the Kawasaki Ninja 650. Previously, we already made a video and a review about the Kawasaki Ninja 650 courtesy by our friend Moto Mark PH and his bike called Toothless. So we already have an idea about what we like about the bike. Now, for the price of 385,000 Kilibin pesos, let's go into in-depth reasons and technicalities about what makes this bike so desirable for beginners and expert riders alike. Reason number one, good looks. Now, this one is kind of obvious, I think. I mean, just look at it. Ain't she just pretty? The way the lines flow on the front of the sharp headlights going through the side of the bike, exiting the rear is just satisfying and just makes sense from an ergonomics point of view. The way the styling is proportioned to balance out all the shapes that it carries is just well executed. To be fair, this specific Ninja 650 is a 2018 model and still looks quite good to this day. One of the ways to know if a Ninja is the newest 2020 model is by the headlight and front fairings. Although not much has changed in the 2020 model except a couple like the front area and the TFT dash, the Ninja still remains most of its visual and mechanical elements. Kawasaki's Sugomi design element can also be identified in the styling of this bike as well as the other Kawasaki bike lineups. The front cross section of the bike is wide enough to displace lots of air. Well, aerodynamics of course, but the bodywork is also thin enough that it doesn't look bulky at all. Well, if you're gonna be buying your first ever big bike as a beginner rider, might as well pick one that looks good, diba? Right? And did I mention that the taillight resembles an X when it lights up? Overall, the Kawasaki Ninja 650 just looks fast even if it's not moving. Reason number two, engine. Three words to sum it up, folks. Performance, simplicity, and reliability. For a middleweight displacement bike, performance is just right. Talk about performance to price ratio. You're getting a lot of bike for its price. Even if it doesn't have the highest horsepower figure out there, the torque makes up for it. The bike is powered by a 649cc parallel twin engine with a classic 180 degree crankshaft and firing order. It's already got dual overhead cams, 8 valves, electronic fuel injection, and a liquid cooling. The engine produces about 67 horsepower at 8,500 rpm and 65.7 newton meters of torque at 6,500 rpm. It may not be a rocket ship by any standards, but it's enough to put a beginner rider in shivers and an experience experienced rider quite satisfied. Unlike super sports bikes which usually have 4 cylinder engines, you don't need to rub the help out of this bike to keep it moving. You see, with an inline 4 engine with the same displacement, you really need to be around the 6000 rpm mark just to feel the push that you're looking for. The parallel twin engine configuration is quite practical as it can cruise smoothly in the 100 km an hour range even in low rpms. So the engine is quite relaxed because of the torque that it's making, quite comparable to the 1.2 liter displacement Harleys. If you take a look at my speedo, the torque engine just propelled me to 185 km an hour in 5th gear on the 10,000 rpm mark and I have one more gear to go and the red line is at 10.5k rpm by the way. The engine is quite simple and built with robust components so the chances of something breaking down is quite low. Being in multiple motorcycle groups online, I haven't heard any of these engines having an issue and most just runs like forever even in the older model ones. Overall, the engine of the Ninja 650 is quite a reliable one. So reliable in fact that it's being used in the Kawasaki's other 650cc platforms like the Z650, Z650 RS, Vulcan 650, and the Versus 650. Having said that, only one thing is for sure. An overbuilt engine with restricted performance really does help in keeping it quite reliable. Reason number three, ergonomics. Simply put it this way, every time you see somebody riding a sport bike, you instantly think, oh, 
Now that looks uncomfortable. And then you swing a leg over the Ninja 650 and realize, holy crap, this is so comfy. How is this possible? Well, it all comes down to ergonomics, folks. While most super sport bikes force you to stretch out your arms and legs so much just to reach the handlebars and pavement, the Ninja 650 is quite the opposite. While it may look like a sport bike, the ergos pretty much imitate those of a naked bike. It just so happens to have bearings for wind protection. The handlebars are higher and wider than a usual sport bike, resulting in you, the rider, reaching it with ease. The seat is also very low. Too low in fact that a 5 foot 2 inch rider just like me could flat foot the bike with no problem. The typical super sport bike usually comes in a high seat position to give the bike lots of ground clearance on the racetrack and twisties. While the Ninja 650 has its emphasis on touring and comfort, hence the category name of the bike, Sports Touring. But don't let the name Sports Touring fool you. The Ninja could also do some pretty decent cornering and lean angles. Overall, sitting on this bike makes you feel that you're riding a naked bike with the added weight protection. Say goodbye to wrist pains and back aches. And of course naman, sido ba naman yung hindi na popogian sa sport bike look diba? Reason number 4. Lesser engine heat. Have you ever experienced riding bigger displacement bikes in slow moving traffic and then felt a lot of heat coming from the engine? Well, these days, it's not uncommon at all with most modern bikes producing a lot of power. Like Ducatis and the Agustas and KTMs, you'll be finding yourself in a lot of heat more often. Riding the Ninja 650, I haven't noticed any significant heat coming from the engine because of its liquid cooling and low compression ratio. Even the KTM Duke 390 and Ninja 400 feels a lot hotter than the 650, especially in slow moving traffic, even with their liquid cooling systems. With most bike manufacturers pushing the boundaries of engine design to their limits, they'd always thought about squeezing out more power out of their engines. And when you don't have the option of increasing bore and stroke, well, you increase its compression ratio to produce more power, of course. But the downside of it is it's gonna be producing a lot of heat as a byproduct. And when your engine produces more heat, your cooling systems better be good. The Ninja 650's good old reliable engine platform may not produce a lot of power for its displacement, but one thing's for sure, the rider would be a lot comfy on this bike and the engine, well, could really last longer as wear and tear are significantly lesser than other bikes. Reason number 5. Wind protection. Imagine this, you're cruising in your naked bike at 120 km an hour and feel all the gust of wind slamming against your body and helmet. And by the time you arrive at your destination, you already feel a bit tired from all the wind. Well, in the Kawasaki Ninja 650, you're not gonna be having that problem. The Ninja 650's got a pretty decent wide enough cross section that could displace more air away from the rider. Also, if you may notice, the angle of the front fairings not that aggressive compared to super sport bikes that require you to tuck in the bike just to deflect wind. Ang angle ng fairings niya ay may kataasan ng konti, so it can still deflect the wind even if you're not in a tuck-in position. You don't have to be in the resting resting position just to hide from the gust of wind on this bike, which makes sense because of its sport touring intended purpose of course. Overall, lesser fatigue on long rides on this bike. Reason number 6. Flush Suspension When riding sport bikes, we usually associate them with a stiff and rough ride, which makes sense because of their riding nature and purpose of pulling off fast lap times on the racetrack and twisties. But not the Ninja. The suspension can also be stiff enough to handle those fast and aggressive twisties. But there is a sense of comfort in the initial travel of the suspension. Small bump absorption is pretty good, which of course in city driving makes a lot more sense. As Philippine roads aren't that perfect, the ride quality is also progressive. The first initial travel of the suspension is a bit softly sprung to absorb those nasty bumps. And going all the way through the suspension travel, it stiffens up a little bit to handle those hard and jerky corners very well, as you pull off more G's in them twisties. Mind you, the front isn't adjustable and the rear is only adjustable on preload, but Kawasaki sure tuned it very well. But if you like them to be stiffer than they are stock, you can always change the springs in the front and have the preload adjusted in the rear of course. Reason number 7. Weight Distribution when it comes to riding bikes, a lack of weight is usually better to achieve great handling with fast transitions on the twisty. So a lighter bike is usually better, right? Well, not necessarily. Even though Kawasaki's Ninja 650 already lost a lot of weight from the previous generation of the ER6F, 20 kilos of weight that is, it's not lightweight by any standard. 
Currently, the bike weighs in at 197 kilograms, but when you ride the bike, you don't even feel the 197 kilograms under your thighs. Just like how Nissan made it possible for the GTR to be fast and balanced in the corners, even with the not so lightweight formula, Kawasaki pulled a little trick off their sleeves by engineering the bike very well and putting all the weight where it matters, and that's below. In short, Kawasaki already had an idea of how to alter and lower the bike's center of gravity. They designed the bike in a way where the heaviest parts just like the engine, transmission, swing arm, and others were always closer to the ground. The result is a bike that doesn't feel like 197 kilograms. The transition on the corridors was quite easy for a bike this heavy, although it's possible for Kawasaki to lighten the Ninja further by putting on forged parts, more lightweight alloys, titanium, and carbon fiber. Of course, the price of the bike could drastically increase, making the bike not a good value for money anymore. Overall, Handling is good, together with the bike's good suspension setup, sport ergonomics, slipper clutch, and sticky tires, making the bike good value for money for most riders who are looking for a good-looking, fast and reliable bike to go on long rides and carve some twisties along the way. Alright everyone, those are my 7 reasons why you should consider buying the Kawasaki Ninja 650. Did I miss anything? Ikaw, what's your favorite thing about the Kawasaki Ninja 650? Comment down below for me to know guys. Alright, if you like our content or learn something, please like and subscribe so I may know if you like it or not. This is John Speedship na nagsasabing iba pa rin ang may alam. See you on our next video. Ciao!